I also brought some of my Trader Joe's seasoning for the popcorn that we bought. Interesting. Do you always do that? Mm-hmm. Nice. Especially this one. Cheesy. Let me freak me out. Wasn't that fun? You good? Mm hmm. Yeah. You excited to watch Leo? Mm hmm. Sit right here, okay? Sit right here. Look at him jump from the seat. That's so nice, Leo. I wonder you couldn't remember that. Yeah. I'd be like, right. <laughs> Maybe go over there.
All right, are you ready? Let's do it. Welcome. It's Sunday. We're streaming. We got Leo here with us. It was Leo's 12th birthday last weekend. Can't, can't even believe he's 12. And that I've had him for 12 whole years. It's so insane to me. To celebrate... We're gonna make a salmon dish. I've actually never made this before. Uh, everything about what we're making today I've never made before, which is always concerning. Um, hopefully this goes well, hopefully it works how I am thinking it should work out in my head here. Um, but to start, per usual, we're gonna make a drink. Um, it's like 73 and gorgeous out in Seattle. So we're going to pretend like it's summer and make a, a Kiwi-inspired kind of summery herby drink. I think we're going to go that route. Earlier, I made a... I'm kind of into doing these simple syrups. So earlier, I made a lime peel and lime leaf simple syrup. And then we're actually going to have a couple kiwis here that we're going to blend up. Um, there's going to be some mint involved, some vodka, a little bit of ginger as well. Um, and I think that's how we're going to we're going to start today off. So let's get that going. All right. And lime juice, obviously. All right. Quick little transition. Let's get these out of the way. All right. So we got our kiwi. Ooh. Lime, ginger, let's get the ginger just a little bit more chopped. All right, this kiwi is gorgeous. Devin and I were just talking that I sometimes eat the kiwi with the skin on. Just eat it like an apple. Um, I forget who I first saw do that. I was like, honestly, like, I hate peeling or cutting kiwis. I used to eat them, like, with a spoon and just cut them in half and try to, like, spoon it out. It was just always so much more effort. I just tried it once. Honestly, so good. Not that big of a deal. All right, so we got a little kiwi. We got a little ginger in there. Let's get some lime juice. Take a little bit of this simple syrup. All right, let's get this guy blitzed. All right, 
Can you guys see this back here? Smells really herby, really gingery. The kiwi seems more subtle. Let's just try it here. Wow, that is so freaking good. Okay, that's insane. Um, how do I want to do this? I think we're gonna get a bigger glass. Let's mix this in first. Actually measuring out a shot for once. With the mint, we're going with just like one of these little sprigs. Um, all the leaves are still going to be attached. Last time, I, I just kept getting mint leaves in my mouth. It's just so uncommonly annoying. Um, so a little update there. Let's get another one of these. All right, got our mint. Let's get this stirred. Goes. Spilling a little bit, spilling a lot. made an absolute mess, no worries. Quick little wipe down. All right. And then we're going to float a little bit of seltzer right on top of these. These are like gorgeous. and see little mint ginger kiwi lime vodka, vodka little spritzer cheers not bad interesting could use like more kiwi Maybe on the next one, we'll blitz the, the last two kiwis in there. And maybe a little bit more of the sweetener. Yeah? Not a touch bit more. Nice All right. 
nice little light summer drink to start the Sunday off. So what we're actually making is a sous vide salmon with this wasabi uh, cream sauce. And then we're actually going to split that with a homemade dill oil. Um, and then it's also going to have these uh, quick pickled, it's like a sugar pickle uh, carrot um, kind of garnish with it here. I've never made this. This is going to be like a salmon mosaic. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that before or not. Um, but a little nervous. Hopefully it stays together when we uh, slice it here. It doesn't fall apart on me. But let's get that going first. Um, I think I'm going to use this kind of front area here so you guys can kind of see what I'm what I'm doing um, all right so we have our salmon with the mosaic basically what happens is you're gonna cut these into strips we're gonna season these heavily with a nori powder and then we wrap them in saran wrap and then go back in the oven or the uh, sous vide to actually cook it already feeling a few bones doesn't hurt to just check <laughs> just feel for these Nothing worse than like biting into fish bones. Thankfully, these guys are coming out pretty easily. I've had like the worst luck sometimes, and it just ruins the fish meat per can. All right. Oh. So many goddamn bones. It's kind of ridiculous. All right. I think we're in good shape. Next, we're going to take the skin off. What's up, Chance? Always good to see you. Always good to hear from you. All right, we got our, our bones out. Next, we got to take this skin off, and then we'll get it sliced up here. Um, easiest way to do this, we're actually going to slice it in half first, just so I have like an easier surface level to get the skin off of. So we'll do these in two kind of pieces. And you really do need a sharp knife for this. Um, otherwise it's not gonna be very fun.
All right, the hardest part is just kind of getting the start going. Um, you're gonna grab the end of it, kind of tilt the blade up against the, the skin here. There we go. All right, so we got one piece going here, one left. This one should be easier to work with. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Now that we have the fish all de-skinned, deboned, we're gonna trim this up and actually cut this into slices. Be as delicate with this as we can. Need one more out of this guy. And then these scraps we're going to use to actually finish the sauce here. So more to come with that. Beautiful. Okay. Clean up for just a second. All right. We are making a sous vide salmon mosaic with this insane, it's going to be this like wasabi cream sauce split with dill oil. And then we're also going to have these pickled carrots, this like sweet pickled carrot going on as well. I'm stoked. All right, so we got our salmon, salmon. We got our salmon slice. We are going to basically just salt it. And then we're actually going to dust it with this nori powder we have going on over here.
All right, we're gonna do one last press to get as much moisture out. All right, let's see if you guys can see this a little bit better in this video. All right, so we have in here just, just like blended up nori. And this is gonna add a, basically as like a seasoning. And then it's also gonna help all of this kind of re-stick together in our mold. Because we're gonna basically have this in this round sphere and then slice this here um, into medallions to, to plate and serve. So we want to get this completely coated. I know Nori is your favorite. All right. All right, beautiful. So that that is all good to go. The next piece is going to be actually get the, getting these in the the saran wrap. And we got to basically get them all tight and rolled up, and then into the sous vide here. So let's get our saran wrap out. Let me do this. All right, we want to do about like three layers of this. All right, layer one. All right, hopefully you guys can see this all right. Um, so we got our saran wrap down. The next thing we're gonna do is basically put our fish in here and roll it up as tight as we possibly can. There is a technique to do doing that, a technique I've never done in my entire life, so hopefully this works out well. All right, so we'll take these, place them just kind of in the center here, on top of each other. Get off the excess. All right, now if you've ever rolled sushi before, it's gonna be a lot like that. 
Um, we're going to just kind of fold it up over and then tuck it under itself and pull it tight. All right, now the ends, you're basically going to pull these out and just start twisting. You do want these as tight as you possibly can. We're going to knot it off. All right, so we got that one side done. We'll do the same on the other here. Yeah, it looks pretty goddamn good for a first timer, right? Okay, so we got these tied off. We're gonna snip the ends. All right, we are gonna poke just a few holes all the way through, just kind of throughout. Just so this doesn't like bubble up and water, because water is going to escape from here, right? Um, okay, so that looks great. We're actually going to put this in our bag. Get this in the sous vide. That's going to go in the sous vide 114 degrees for, I don't know, this recipe that I read earlier, this lady seemed kind of neurotic, but she said 26 minutes. So um, we're going to go with that. It is 34 after. That's perfect. So right at 6 p.m. Um, that is going to be ready to take out. Okay. Moment to cheers for all those hanging out. Appreciate you. All right, the next couple things we got to get ready are the things that just can like sit and wait. So one of them is going to be the dill oil, and then the other one is the pickled carrots here. Um, so let's get this figured out and set up for later. I do still want to save these. So we're right here. moment for cleaning. All right, we are going to get the dill oil going next. Um, takes a little bit while to drain. <clears throat> and to get a clean, like, clear, any kind of herb oil, 
you don't want to like press it through the the sieve or the sous vide or the uh, uh, chinois. Reason being is it's going to get all of this like sediment of the uh, herb in there with it, and it doesn't have like a good clean showing. So you do really just have to kind of let it drip and do its thing here. Um, so we are actually going to get another drink going. We're going to do a little makeshift version of the first one. A little simple syrup. A little vodka. And we'll float it here. All right, cheers. Thanks for hanging out. All right, let's get our dill oil going. I've seen this, at least this sauce, this. Uh, oil split sauce done at so many Michelin star restaurants. So I'm going to try it. Um, we'll hope that this goes well, um, but it has this, such a cool look at the end here. So um, let's get that going. But yeah, bear with me if this is just a complete disaster. Um, first, we got to get our dill and our oil. Um, we do want to just use plain oil, no olive oil needed here. So we're just going to use... Um, Vegetable oil, excuse me. I do half cup. Maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. Three quarters cup. A little transition. All right, so we got our oil. We also got, just got oil everywhere. All right, also got our dill. Let's get this off the stem for the most part. Dill is like one of my absolute favorite herbs. So underrated, has just such a, I just love the smell. It's just so insane. Probably bought way, way too much dill for this, but that's fine. And then I'm hoping that dill and wasabi go well together. Um, I think they will. They're both very herby. One obviously has the kind of heat factor to it. Um, but I think they're going to play off well and then obviously play well with the salmon here. Dill is another one of those herbs that's just like put on this planet for cooking. It's like it just has such a great smell. Same with like rosemary to me. It's like clearly this is <clears throat> for cooking. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, we've got one of these packets of dill in here. I have two more. Let's see how much we actually need. All right, now you can see a little bit better. Interesting. Okay, let's do one more of these. We'll blitz it. See what we're kind of coming working with. Maybe not one full more. Maybe a half more. We'll see. All right, this looks kind of good to me. So, got our non or our neutral oil, excuse me. We got our dill. Really, all we're going to do, blitz this until it gets to the consistency I'm looking for. And then we are going to actually bring this up to heat a little bit, blitz it again then strain it, and then um, let it do its thing. Okay, first blitz coming up. 
All right, I know it's kind of hard to see the blitz blitzing on going back here, but. It's looking pretty good nice and green if you could smell this you'd be blown away this is smells so insane love it okay so all we're gonna do with this is bring this just up to temperature um it's really gonna help release the dill flavor by adding just that heat component to it and then while that's going Let's get our carrot deal all set up here. Um, we're doing the quick pickle on the carrot, and that's just gonna be water, vinegar, sugar, and some herbs. So let's get that going, get the guy going too. All right, we're doing A little bit here, just about two cups of water. We're doing some dry vermouth as well as just your classic white vinegar. And I'm eyeballing this here. I think the typical ratio is like three to one liquids to vinegar. Almost poured that in the wrong one. All right. Now with these pickled carrots basically super simple quick peel on these almost forgot my sugar and my vinegar here for my pickle let's get that going hold on all right two cups of water do like a half cup of sugar here. Okay, I think our carrot is peeled. That looks good. And we want these, like, I want a specific kind of look. So let's cut these. And hopefully I can get this guy out here. All right. Let's give our quick pickle a stir. We also are going to add... Some star anise. Look at how gorgeous these little cloves are. I love them. Um, this tastes just like licorice, basically, like black licorice. I'm just gonna break these up. Put those in there. We're gonna do some lemon peel as well. Saw that. All right.
Okay, so we have lemon peel, star anise, our sugar, water, vinegar mixture in there. That is all going. Um, we're gonna add, or basically what we're gonna do is gonna bring that up just to a boil here. Um, and then we're gonna pour it over these like thin strips of carrot that I'm about to make. Um, hopefully this works out well. And then those will soften the carrot, um, pickle them and add this kind of like nice crunchy sweetness, uh, uh, tangy vinegary like bite to them, which should play well on this like heavy fat based sauce. That's the thought here. All right. Some of these a stir, and then let's get these carrots going. See how those end up. Let's turn our oil down. It just started boiling. We're gonna take it off the heat, let it just kind of sit, and let's see how these carrots look. All right, I think these look, I don't need a whole ton of them. Get some of those first ones out. All right, I think that looks great. Let's get our bowl. Now we have just these like thin little paper thin slices of carrot. We're going to put these in our bowl. Once the pickling liquid is like up to heat here, we're just going to pour it over and let those chill and sit in that like sweet tangy mixture there. All right, let's look at our oil. Do you see it's like super green, um, nice and bright. Are you gonna blitz it one more time and then strain it? Where's our deal? Hopefully this is cold enough. Yeah, we're good, we're good. All right, this is our dill oil. Let's get this strained and good to go. And then we'll check on that in a little bit here. All right, we said 6 p.m. on the dot. We have nine minutes left. Let's see how this guy's looking. Beautiful. Okay, let's get our oil strained. A little switch back. All right, so we have this. We have our chinois. This is just a really finely meshed strainer. Um, the other piece that we're adding here is the cheesecloth. And this is just gonna pick up any like, just gonna help make sure that nothing gets through. 
and it just drains exactly how it should. All right, our oil or our pickling mixture is looking great. Okay, where is our oil? Here we go. All right, can you guys see this? All right, we're pouring that through and we're just gonna let this sit and do its thing. Okay, this guy's also done. Now that we have this, we're just gonna pour this over our carrots. We're gonna let them just sit in that broth and pickle over the next like 10, 20 minutes here. All right, the last thing we need to work on is our actual sauce for this, this dish here. And this is something we have to be really careful with because the salmon is going to be served cold. Um, the sauce can't be too warm for a number of reasons. It will break. It will like overcook the, the salmon that we've cooked like to a specific temperature here. Right. Um, and we want it to play well on the mouth for lack of a better word like we want this to have this cold salmon with this just lightly warm summer sauce right that's like the thought process here um so let's get that going we got to be like i said careful we're going to use our basis or our excuse me how we build our base of flavor um like we typically do here so let's get this guy going um we're going to do basic oil pretty high heat. We're going to get half an onion, slice it down the middle. I'm going to put some MSG and some salt. Spread this around and then just straight down in the oil. Pan's not even hot yet. doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to come up to heat here slowly. Let's throw some garlic in there as well. And again, we're going to strain all of this out. So didn't even take the skin off the onion for the garlic. We're just doing a quick smash and drop. All right, we also need to get a ice bath going for the fish. Cheers once again to everyone hanging out. Appreciate you guys. All right. This feels like a good time to kind of clean up a little bit. You can already see some color forming at the bottom of our pan. Exactly what we're looking for. Um, we're going to add some fish here as well. That's just going to round out our flavors and make you know that this is a fish dish. All right, let's clean up, like I said.
<clears throat> All right, let's see our color on our onion here. Nothing, nothing, nothing even. All right, we got more time. The other thing we have to be careful about with this dish is making sure everything um, that we're adding to it does not affect the color in a negative way, right? Um, we want this to be a, as pure white as possible. And I'm already worried about that with the coloring of the onion. So we might heat glaze this a little bit quicker than we usually would. Let's add our fish skin, get some more fat in here, we want to get it. Mixing this guy around. Let's get our deglazing liquid ready. We're doing a little white wine, just a touch. And then some stock, of course. All right, turn our heat up. All right, we got that going. We're gonna hit it with salt, MSG, um, and white pepper. Again, focusing on the thought of color here. All right, our oil is pretty much strained for the most part first, through the first run here. We're going to go one more time. Where are we at here? I don't know if you guys can see this, but it still has some slight amount of like dill sediment. I can't think of a better word. Dill particles. So we're going to put it through one or two more times. And that should help with making it just a little bit cleaner of a sauce, just like it, making it look as clean as possible here. So this is a little off screen, but we're just running it through the same filtration. And we'll see what gets caught and what doesn't. And on the next go around, we'll actually switch the uh, cheesecloth. Cheesecloths are one of the best things ever created in the entire world. Especially if you have any like love around sauce making, there's nothing worse than like a dirty sauce. And all you, all I ever want is something that is going to like strain out everything I want out of it while keeping all the good stuff. And the chinois isn't enough. Like you need a cheesecloth. So just picked up a whole bunch of cheesecloths. So I'm I'm flush on the cheesecloths right now. All right, we're at 6.03. Jesus Christ, you guys are not reminding me. All right, so here is our salmon mosaic to be here. Let's take it out of the bag. We got this little guy. We're gonna put him in the ice bath, let him chill. Get to the temperature we need him to be at. 
And he's going off to the side here. All right, we have a good boil excuse me, on this guy. I think we're in a good spot to add a few of our herbs. Um, we want to add the uh, wasabi here as well. We're going to add a little bit of tarragon and a touch of dill. It's really important to incorporate flavors in that regard, like just so there is some consistency throughout your dish. I think that makes a lot of sense. We have dill in the oil. We'll have a little bit of dill in this sauce, nothing like crazy. Um, and then the wasabi should be like the kind of slappy in the face flavor with a lot of like background of, of the tarragon, the oil, slight dill, or not the oil, the onion, excuse me, um, onion garlic mixture. So a little bit of wasabi. I don't know if you guys, yeah, like, you know, wasabi, I've had sushi before, obviously. But like when you buy it in the actual paste in this little straight up tube, it it will smack you in the fucking face. So a little bit goes a long, long ways. We're going to use like a pea. It might be too much even. A pea size. Pea size to start. All right, we're breaking all this up. We're getting everything, all the fond off the bottom, the little brown bits. Just add into the flavor of our, our sauce here. All right, get this all incorporated. And then we'll give this a taste, adjust our seasoning, continue to reduce. Um, we'll eventually add the uh, cream uh, mixture. That's when we really want it to be at its like lowest temperature where it's just warm. Right now it's like roaring, boiling. So um, once we get there, we'll, uh, we really have to like focus on temperature. Oh. And then we'll get to plating and then we'll, uh, Call it a night. See what happens. All right, let's put some of this away. Leave this guy out. Should we get with this? probably hear the ice cubes. We're getting another one going. A little simple syrup. I said this before, but like I'm getting going on these simple syrups. Like I'm all about them. It honestly is needed for most mixed drinks. Just say even like a little bit is so helpful and nice. Add a little bit of lime juice to this guy. mix on this. Cheers. All right, let's give this a preliminary uh, 
Taste test. See where we're at. I'm into it. Salt's there. Tangy's there. I don't get any wasabi. Maybe I was lying earlier. Let's do another pea size. It's like two pea sizes. A little whisk going. Break up the wasabi here. No, I like the basis of it so far. We got a lot of great flavors going, but I really want the wasabi and herb to like be the, the forefront and this like kind of, I say sweet, but to me, cream is like just as sweet as I want things for the most part, unless we're talking Asian food. Um, so like just enough sweetness from the cream to uh, balance it out. Um, but I still want a little bit more condensed flavor of the fish and the onion and the, the dill tarragon piece here. Oh, this drink is just so good. All right, so we doubled the wasabi, mix that all about. Let's get another taste test, just see if it's even just like remotely on the uh, taste buds there. You guys see this? This camera is so tough. All right, maybe I fucked up. Maybe I'm speaking wrong. Um, that's it. We're adding more wasabi. I still can't taste it. All right, we added another two pea sizes. We're at like four peas at the moment. We're at like four peas worth. Keep this mixed up. All right, let's see what let, ugh, see what comes of that. This is literally what cooking is to me: slowly adjusting, taste adjust, taste adjust, until you get it where you want. Okay, our oil looks great. We are going to switch the cheesecloth. I wish I could reuse you, but cannot. I don't think you guys can see this, but all I'm doing is pouring the oil through the cheesecloth again. This is a brand new cheesecloth. We're just going to let it sit and do its thing. I don't know about you guys, but I love making sauces. My favorite thing about the cooking piece. Everything I'm eating needs a, a sauce. I'm one of those firm believers. If you're one of those people who's like, I order a steak and I just want to eat it with just a steak, just plain. Psychopath. Complete psychopath to me. It's all about the sauce. Um, so I'm really stoked about this one. We're going to route never gone before. This little oil split as well should be fun. So we'll see. We'll see. We're going to keep reducing this guy. Um, I might add a little bit more dill tarragon. Um, just because it's not as in the forefront of the uh, kind of flavor profile that I was hoping for. Not that I want it to be like so overpowering, but I do want it to be noticeable. 
And let's check on our wasabi kind of profile. See where we're at there. Wow. All right, this is so freaking good. Okay. Um, I want more pepper, white pepper that is, excuse me. Filtering out the oil again. I'm really stoked for you guys to see this like finished oil split um, cream sauce here. All right, let's get some plates ready for plating, obviously. All right, we're reducing, we're con consolidating flavor. Um, still don't taste the wasabi. We're doing another. I don't think I've ever lied more in my entire life other than about this wasabi here. Because I do want it to have like a spicy element. I think that's really good with, uh, with fish. So um, hoping for the best with that. This guy's still reducing, still doing its thing. Um, let's get the strain situation ready for him, actually. quick clean up and then we'll get this all wrapped up here All right, let, let's give this a taste test. We've added so much wasabi. It's got to be there by now. We've got our herby elements hitting nicely. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Wasabi's just barely there. Oh, I still want to add more. I hate that I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. All right, no more allowed. That's all we're doing, but it need it needs to have it in there. All right, one last whisk about come together, and we're gonna strain, and then we'll start plating. My least favorite part. All right, a moment to cheers as we wrap this up here. This is a quicker one, quicker one than usual. We're at like one hour 20. Honestly, not mad about it. It's so nice in Seattle right now. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Also recently purchased a uh, cat backpack where it's all like mesh on the sides. So we've been taking Leo out on a kind of evening strolls and he's absolutely loving it so that's a lot of fun here 
you know, that's how you're getting old when you're 32 and you find joy in taking your cat on walks. Where is Leo? This whole dish is about you here. Get on the chair. Where's the cat? This is all for you. This is because it's your birthday. Does it smell good? Do you have a sensitive tummy? Do you vomit all the time? You got salmon in there. You love salmon. All right. All right, let's give this one last taste. Turn the heat off. I think we're, we're going to be in good shape. I am worried about the color. It's already... Okay, this tastes so good, guys. Let's do this. Switching plate or switching bowls. We're adding our mixture. Come on. Okay. Okay. So we got our mixture strained. It's been reduced. Flavor is on point. We got our great consistency right there. We're gonna take a moment to cheers. All right, let's clean off our workspace a little bit so we can get all this finished and plated. So many like fish scales. Are these scales? What are these? All right. I think we're chilling. Oh, one more, one more, two more. Okay. Let's get this all figured out with cream. See the color already changing here. Let's get this all incorporated. Just a touch off of white. Um, we're gonna add a little bit more just to hopefully encourage. So that tastes insane, that tastes so good. Okay. All of this is looking great. Now, like I said, with this one, we have to be really careful with the temperature. We got this on basically low. We wanted to just come up to like a very basic, basic simmer. Um, nothing pushing it past like boiling or anything over that. Um, let's get our dill pieces looking great. The other thing I love about dill is it plates really well. I just look at this like just gorgeous like I love little frilly bits of this we'll just kind of plate it randomly I think it's gonna look great I'm worried about our salmon 
again, this mosaic I've never made in my entire life. So hopefully when we cut it, it like stays together. It doesn't like fall apart here. Um, but if it does fall apart, I'll just end stream really quickly. Okay. All right, I think we got enough like kind of dill pieces set out looking great. All right, we also have our dill oil. Look at how gorgeous this looks. Completely deep green. We're going to transfer this to a little bottle here. It's not literally the perfect amount of oil. Only spilled like a tablespoon. I'll take it. Small win. All right, let's clean this guy up. Oh, or probably got this too hot. I think we're okay. God damn it. We're trying our best here, guys, you know. Would have been nice if anyone could have told me it was boiling over. All right, that's looking great. Got our cute little bottle of dill oil. Love that for us. Alright, quick clean up and let's put this all to bed. Alright, that looks great. Um, let's see these over here. Let's get these guys going. Look at these just like. Oh, these look so gorgeous. All right, I think I just want to like roll these. What do I want to do with them? All right, let's switch this so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Let's try one of these, guys. Mm. Super simple, sweet, earthy, tangy, like the the star anise, the licorice is so subtle, it's not overpowering. I'm sure that was like a, a qualm for some of you. And we're just taking these rolls, we're rolling them up, slicing them at the bottom so they stand up. 
And we're just going to plate these all around. Kind of like rolling them up on the biased bias. So you can kind of see the the twirl of it as it's all rolled up at the bottom there. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. Let's do a couple more. All right, last little roll up. It's gorgeous. All right, let's get this going. We're going to slice these into medallions. Um, we're going to leave the plastic wrap on for the time being. All right, look at our little mosaic salmon. Does that not look gorgeous? I needed more salmon. We should have done a thicker mosaic, but that looks absolutely insane. Snip these off. I don't like destroying the look here. So that one looks great. We've got that one going. Let's get the second one.
All right, next we have the, the cream sauce with this oil split that we're about to do. Again, I've never done this, so we're just gonna add crazy oil to it and just kind of run this around. Let's plate some dill kind of around and on top of this. And there we have it. We have our salmon mosaic. We have a dill split wasabi cream sauce. We have our pickled sweet carrots. We got the dill, the garnish. This is gonna be like literally a bite and a half. <laughs> and then we're gonna be still hungry. But no, I'm stoked for this. I think it turned out okay. I already have like a handful of critiques that I would already do, but no, this looks insane. Um, appreciate everyone per usual, as always for hanging out, joining the Sunday stream. We're just cooking. Half the time I don't know what I'm doing. Half the time I feel like I know what I'm doing, but I appreciate all of you. Cheers to everyone who hung out and stayed the whole time. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Hope that was good food. Hope that was a good time. But now I appreciate everyone. Have a good night, guys.